This week I've gone back to a shorter version of the videos, um, just about 20 minutes hopefully. Um, I'm showing the groundworks that were done by um, diggersforhire.com, which is a Bulgarian firm run by an English couple. We've taken out the bottom part of the vineyard to make a garden, made an area for polytunnel in the paddock out the back, and improved the drive up to the house so we don't slip off again in the snow. The other thing this week is the recipe for Cornish pasty, but made with Bulgarian ingredients. Hope you enjoy. So today is our first day with having diggers for hire come to help us out and do some excavation work. We've got the lovely Paul, who's been here since 8 o'clock this morning. Um, so far, he's done the drive, which is fantastic because excuse my shakiness I don't have a gimbal um, yeah so the drive had fallen in over the years and made the opening very very narrow so it was not impossible well I've been Superman so he can get anything up a drive but Paul's been down there today with the digger opened it right up so all we've got to do now is stop the walls from falling in as you can see it hits a lot better so this has all been pushed over to the side and it will sink but hopefully not have quite the drop that we had before so yeah good job Paul Polytunnel is going to go. Um, I have to make some sort of retainer along here. I was thinking probably just corrugated sheets and posts. I'll probably have to do something similar along that edge so that, that it doesn't all just sort of wash down and end up in the bottom of the valley. But it's all looking good. Easily another day's work yet. Dex loves this, is all this soft ground he did. I didn't really need to hire a digger, he could have done the lot. He absolutely loves digging it up. So we've lost one row from the vineyard where he's came up, come up through. Um, I'll come back down through this way. round 
see this area here is all going to be grass when it's all finished. And I'll have to go over it a few times with the rotator, smooth it out. I think Paul's going to come down with the digger and just grade over it on his way out. Just smooth a few bits out. Hi all, <laughs> this is my third attempt at taping this, um, I'm not having a lot of luck with cameras at the moment, or phones, so one phone won't start, the other phone run out of space and I can't seem to get the camera to record onto the um, card rather than its internal memory, so I'm now trying with, the, with my SLR camera. Um, I'm going to make pasties and proper traditional Cornish pasty which I've now cut the vegetables up um, but, but essentially with a Cornish pasty the vegetables should only be onion, potato and either turnip or parsnip um, not, sorry not turnip or parsnip turnips or swede um, the only thing we can get in Bulgaria is black turnips which taste just like turnips but they're, they're slightly pep more peppery almost like uh, radish but uh, definitely turnip flavour so I'm, that's what I'm going to do, do it with here. Um, beef wise all I've got again in Bulgaria beef isn't a big thing to let go it's usually Telechko. just to let go it's just uh, a very nondescript Irish beef you know like a stewing steak um, if you've got the choice the best beef and the one that you traditionally use would be skirt beef skirt um, but this will do so it's usually equal parts of onion turnip or swede um, and potato and onion did I say onion? You I did. said onion already um, so sort of the three vegetables and the meat a bit of flour seasoning and that's it. You don't pre-cook the meat, you don't pre-cook the vegetables, it's all done raw, mixed together. If you mix too much up you can put it in the freezer as a, um, you know, as pasties or you can put it in the freezer as the pasty filling. pasty filling and then use it another time. So all I've got left to do now is just cut the meat up and put that in the, in the vegetables and then flour them. So that's my veggie board. It's not the best beef, but it will do for this. And the other thing is all the sort of ingredients you, you cut up into roughly the same sort of size chunks. Um, so either big, small, depends how you like your pasties really. That's too thick. I haven't finished yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Skirt is ideal because it's it's quite thin and then you just cut it into slithers um, with sort of like this Irish stewing beef it's it's a bit chunkier but I'm still trying to do it into little sort of slithers so that's how it's nice and cut out any grisly bits grisly even grisly what about our other good boys today what about other good boys? Meat boys. Pork's really good over here. Oh yeah, I mean Bulgaria is very much pork. Chicken and pork. And chicken. Um, anything other than pork and chicken is a luxury. So you kind of get it in the supermarkets every so often. Um, but it's usually expensive. Um, and it, it's usually only either at special times or when places like Lidl decide to have a sort of a promotion, promotion on thing. Recently they had lamb. A bit, it was a bit overpriced. And it 28 lebs. Yeah, and it wasn't the best lamb. It was a fine. I, we made a cleftico with one and a um, roast lamb with another bit. 
It was an anorexic lamb. Yeah, it was rather anorexic lamb. It wasn't oh. uh, not like good old uh, sort of Welsh lamb or English lamb. Oh mutton. Oh mutton. You don't get mutton over here. You probably do, but where? I wouldn't know. I'd love to get hold of some mutton right now. That's the other funny thing is you, when you can't get a certain meat, you crave it more. Um, even if in the UK you wouldn't we necessarily have it that often, <laughs> because you know you can get it. Um, it's you know it's you don't think about it much, but when you can't get it. You really think, oh, I really crave a bit of this or I crave a bit of that. Going back to the pork. Yeah, going back to the pork. We Pro bought. Oh, yeah. I mean, the price of pork and uh, chicken over here is, is ridiculously cheap compared to the UK. Um, the price of other meats is expensive, but chicken and pork, which is sort of like the staple over here. Um, <laughs> You can't get bacon, so I make my own bacon. Um, they often have special offer on... I don't know what he's... You get special offers on loin of pork. Uh, Thanks. Which isn't the best for making bacon, but it makes okay bacon. Um, except there's no rind and there's no fat, which I like. But Teresa doesn't like anyway, so that doesn't matter. Um, I got a... It's, it's about what was it today? Eight eight ninety nine lever. Eight ninety nine lever for loin. A um, kilo. A kilo, which is uh, what four pounds something for a kilo. Yeah. And then for cheap, just sort of cheap. Um, Stewing pork. It is, yeah. Don't really know what what cut of pork it is. Will you shut up? Well, we did it with bugger. Um, it was six fifty lev a kilo, which is three quid a kilo, which is which is is fine for making. Uh, we have seen it cheaper like that in Morrison's in England. Yeah, yeah, um, it has had its moments in the UK really cheap. Um, not that I necessarily agree with cheap meat. It should be a certain price, but. Uh, but we got a big lump of pork that I've divided into four portions and I think it cost us 11 levs, yeah. so less than five quid. Yeah, I'm hoping you can hear Teresa on here because if you can't it's a one-sided conversation but Teresa is chirping in. I don't know oh. if you really want to just watch me cut that meat, it's nearly finished. Yeah, crack on. Crack on. Get nearly there. But this is how you make a real Cornish pasty. Yeah. I None of your G word. Oh, what? Ginsters? Yeah, can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is more like. Is it? Who is it? Phelps? Phelps? Phelps pasties in Hale. Phelps pasties in Hale, which are excellent pasties. So if you're ever in Hale, Phelps are the ones to go to. Lovely pasties. In Cornwall. What did I say? You said Philps. Yeah. But it's in Cornwall. So yeah, that's what I said. What did I say? You said if you ever oh. go to a Philps. Go to Philps. Right, that's the meat cut up. A couple of gristly bits there. Cats can have that in a bit. Oh. We got house flies here this year. We've never had house flies in Bulgaria, or not in this part of Bulgaria. In all the four or five years we've been here. This year, they're everywhere. There's the cat. Get him out. Clive! <laughs> Sorry. No, Clive. Right. Dust in a flower. Trace? Yes. Can you grab the salt and pepper? Yes. Do you want the new one? Yeah. Pepper grinders here are crap. Yeah. What salt? Uh, that one I've got in the white tub. Right. Come on. Oh. 
<laughs> Probably find at the end of this, none of this is filmed. Probably. No, it's flicking. Those cats and dogs. Cats and dogs are all over the place thinking they're going to get some food. Loads of pepper. Gotta have lots of salt and pepper in pasties. Oh, these grinders are rubbish. You are seeing ghosts, Dexter. There's nobody up there. Dex, Dex, shush. Alright, it's very good. Gotta go in my hands. There. I'm losing veggies here. We need to bring some decent bowls over as well to mix. When you first move to another country and you don't know where to get certain things and you don't necessarily haven't necessarily bought everything over that you would have done everything's a bit of a compromise so this is a salad bowl it's too small for mixing meats and stuff together uh, it'll do right wash my hands and then we'll go on to the pastry Right, so we fed the animals, so hopefully they'll leave me alone for five minutes. Um, just going to do the pastry now, so it's a short pastry. Um, short crust. Short crust pastry. Yeah. So I'm only getting this only been in freezer, so there's not a lot. I'm only going to make a couple of pasties, maybe three, save one. No, you'll eat it for breakfast tomorrow. Yeah, it might be for my breakfast tomorrow. Enough. So it's just flour, some butter. This is again, <laughs> it's another thing in Bulgaria we struggle to get nice butter. Um, little do English butter, but it's ever so expensive. Um, all the other butters seem to be unsalted. Um, and being a dairy farmer, you're a bit particular. Yeah, I do like my butter, but unsalted butter is just not the same, and it goes rancid quite quickly over here. So. It's not ideal. I don't know why they don't have salted butter. It's obviously just a um, traditional thing taste. over here. Yeah, quite a bit of butter. Plus not that much. I want to use this butter up as well. Yeah, it's not that much. <laughs> this is just an egg wash. Um, I've put this over it to stop these little fruit flies and that going in it. Just a bit of salt. Dex has found his bush. Oh, 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 they're all they're interested in what's happening in the garden with the uh, where we've um, had the digger in. Dex, that's enough. Um, so I've rubbed the butter in. Now it's just some water to get it to pastry consistency. We have all this lovely spring water over here. Um, tap water. We don't drink tap water. We don't drink it. Apparently, you can drink it. Um, some people say don't, but up here it's supposed to be fine. It hates my hair. <laughs> it's quite, yeah, it's quite, uh, I hard. can never remember which is which. It's quite hard or soft. Which one? Hard. Anyway, 
we get a lot, lot of hair <coughs> today. It's fine for washing your teeth and everything else. And I have drunk it when I've been really thirsty and it hasn't done me any harm. But you get this everywhere, in, all, all over, certainly this area, in part of Bulgaria, you get all these beautiful springs. You'll just be driving down the road and there'll be a parking area and it'll have a little water sign. And you go in and it's all spring water and it's gorgeous. So we use, we just go and get cans of spring water to use for everything. This is the bit I hate, getting your hands sticky. Stop being a girl. So I've made the pastry um, and we've moved from beer to wine time. This wine bottle isn't what I've drunk tonight. This yeah. is, we didn't. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we haven't got a rolling pin. So. We have? Yeah, we got rolling pins in the UK. We haven't got any rolling pins here. So, just going to grease the pan for when they go in the oven. Do you want me to put the oven on? Uh, that'd be a good idea, yeah. What pen? Uh, about 200. Or 180. Like <coughs> nice bit of marble. It doesn't have to be marble, it just happens to be we've got a nice bit of marble here. Marble is good with pastry. Marble is brilliant with pastry. Apparently. I reckon. Yeah, it's a good idea. What do you reckon? Three in there? Oh, more than three? Mm, don't know. See how that rolls out. Might be. Wine glass isn't very good on a wobbly table. This is for the fruit flies. Or anything to stop them getting your wine. Yeah, you mustn't get my wine. Don't drop the bottle either. They won't get mine. No, you drink it too quickly. Exactly. <laughs> A bit of chainsaw going on in the distance. As usual. As usual. You can't wake up by eight o'clock without a chainsaw going. No. How big you like your pasty, you can make it any size. We use a tea plate. We use a tea plate, a dinner plate. No, we don't use a dinner plate. A saucer. <laughs> entirely up to you, it depends how much you like your pasties. But that size plate is perfect. So then you just put a bit of your filling in the middle. Actually, they're quite small. They're not that small. <laughs> <laughs> Too small for me. And a bit of egg wash. The eggs. You know what I forgot to bring out there? What? A fork or something. Okay. I'll get you a fork. We don't have to have a fork because you should be able to pleat it on just no, you, rubbish. Yeah, pleat it. it. Some people are better at this than others. I'm rubbish. But then, the pasty should be good and rustic anyway. Oh, look at that. You've not done that. That's right. No, I'll leave it at that. <gasps> you made me get a fork for nothing. Yeah. Fork you. One. Don't throw my food. Yeah, you're right, it's going to make more than three. I told you. So. Lift it up a bit. Yeah. Try. So that's actually made five. My breakfast too. Um, there's still some left over. Which I'm going to freeze. So that will freeze. There's enough there to do another couple of pasties. Um, now I'm just going to egg wash the top, just to make them look nice when they come out. My 
<laughs> what do you call it? Pleating? Not pleating. Pleating skills. Yeah, pleating skills are rubbish. But then a pasty is supposed to be a bit rough because it's a... It's a well, miner's it's food. It's a miner's food. They didn't eat the actual edge. Well, the, yeah, the, the, the thick crusts, the idea was that if you had coal covered fingers, you could leave the thick crusts. And lob it. And lob it. Or if you like city food, eat it. Eat it. it. <laughs> if you're extra hungry, eat it. If you're lacking minerals, eat it. If you like the taste of coal and you're pregnant, eat it. Yeah. You, and if you don't, don't eat it. <laughs> um, you can probably do vegetarian pasties. Of course you can. But they're not Cornish pasties. Well, they could be Cornish vegetarian they're pasties. They're vegetarian pasties without the meat. Not the same. They are just not the same. I'm sorry, nothing wrong with being vegetarian, but the taste is crap. You like meat. You've got to have a bit of meat. And in a pasty, you've definitely got to have a bit of meat. That's it. We'll show you when they're done. I'll show you when they're done. <laughs>